I'm Alan Potash, CEO of the Jewish Federation of Omaha. It is my honor now to welcome Bruce Freelander to start us off this evening. Bruce? I'm Bruce Freelander, President of the Jewish Federation of Omaha, and I am happy to welcome you to one of Omaha Jewish community's best nights. Our first awards tonight go to the Agency Volunteers of the Year. These are the people who are essentially the backbone of our organization. Those who work diligently behind the scenes and work not for the recognition, but for their love of our mission. <coughs> These are just seven. These are seven amazing volunteers. It takes hundreds of volunteers to keep these agencies running. Anyone that had volunteered this year for any agency on this campus, please stand and be recognized. And we thank you all so much for your service to our community. The Community Service Award recognizes programs that are creative, innovative, and foster Jewish cultural, religious, educational, and social purposes. This year's Community Service Award recipient meets and exceeds those criteria. Beth Els welcoming the stranger. Response to the Syrian refugee crisis, Beth El Senegal felt a need to get involved and not remain silent. Through Lutheran Family Services in Omaha, Beth El was able to settle a Syrian family last August. They say, when you save a child, God knows your name. Rabbi Alan, who saved five children and their mother. It is my pleasure to present the Robert and Ellen Gordman Jewish Team Leadership Award this year to Emily Cutler and Michaela Langdon. Tonight we honor two outstanding young women for their contributions to our Jewish community. Emily is the daughter of Pam and Bruce Cutler and will be a junior at Westside High School. She's an active member of BBYO, serving in a number of leadership positions. She's enthusiastic and welcoming, always receptive to feedback, others' ideas, and always gets the job done. Emily brought back the important tradition of hosting training courses for new BBYO girls developing the curriculum, producing the information, and encouraging other young women to participate. Emily is currently co-creating a team foundation and the Teen Service Council as part of Young Jewish Giving. Michaela Langdon is the daughter of Sharon Commissar and Randy Langdon, and is a recent graduate of Millard West High School. Michaela served throughout high school on the Omaha Temple Youth Group Board, holding a number of positions along the way. Throughout her life, Michaela has been active at Temple, serving as a madrachim, a teacher's assistant, for eight years. She is known for her excellent leadership skills and her ability to inspire others as a role model. I think everyone here tonight celebrates the achievements of these two young, wonderful, amazing, strong, dedicated young women. The Jody and Neil Malshock Award for Professional Excellence is presented annually to a professional in the Omaha Jewish community who has shown exemplary performance in advancing the mission of their organization. The Jewish Federation of Omaha Board of Directors selects the recipient of the award from those nominated. This year's recipient is Julie Katzman. Thank you. Thanks, Jody and Buzz. I want to thank you both for what you have done over the years not only for the Jews here in Omaha, but in Israel and around the world. And on a personal note, I thank you both for your very special and unwavering friendship. I am honored to receive the Malashak Award, but I feel that this award for professional excellence goes well beyond me, and I'd like to accept it on behalf of all of us who work throughout Jewish Omaha. We appreciate your recognition of those who have made our life's work about nurturing, sustaining, and growing Jewish life. I would also like to recognize my family, most of whom are here this evening, to support me, as they always have. 
And finally, to my wonderful friends and my awesome rabbi, Ari Demitzer. A few weeks ago, a community member stopped by our offices, and he was particularly excited and wanted to talk to us about giving campus tours. So I explained to him that we frequently give tours. We have a lot of people that stop in from out of town. We have people interested in the JCC or visiting. He said, that's not what I'm talking about. What I mean is that I want community members to have the tour that I just had. He went on to explain. He had started a few hours earlier with a visit to the Penny Z. Davis Child Development Center. He had stopped by to visit his baby granddaughter in the infant room. Following that, he went through the fitness center, proceeding upstairs, walking down the halls filled with photographs from the Nebraska Jewish Historical Society, reminding us of our community's rich history. Walking past the library, the Jewish Press, the ADLCRC, the Institute for Holocaust Education, and Jewish Family Service. He then continued on past the dance studio, arriving at the Rose Lumpkin Jewish home, where he visited his father-in-law. He went on to say that he wanted everyone to see the daily work of our Federation and that the lives we touch, from our youngest babies to our more vulnerable seniors, and everyone in between. I was struck by the simple yet powerful message of his journey through our campus. Tonight, we celebrate this wonderful community and the lay volunteers and the professionals who work every day to keep us moving forward. We celebrate our partnership with Israel, our homeland, and our heritage. Collectively, we share the traditional and beautiful goals of repairing the world, being a light unto the nation, and teaching our children traditions from one generation to another, Lador Vador. But I think we also embody with our work the simple act of just trying to take care of each other one day at a time. Thank you. Officer Alan Potter. First, I'd like to congratulate all of our honorees this evening. Your contributions make our community what it is. Thank you very much. Over the past month, as I reflected on the 50th anniversary of the Six Day War, I found a quote in the June 1967 Jewish press from Harvey Fair, who chaired the Israel Emergency Campaign after the Six Day War. He said, the posture of Jews all over the world is straighter now because of the magnificent victory the Israelis won. We continue to stand tall today as we witness Israel's strength, vitality, and impact. My goal as CEO, our goal as leaders of Jewish Omaha is to bring strength, vitality, and impact to our community through programs and services here on campus and across the community in cooperation with our synagogues and other organizations. Let me share some of the highlights from the past year. We achieved a four-star rating with Charity Navigator, the nonprofit rating organization. The Rose Wilkin Jewish Home has seen significant growth this year, especially in short-term rehab care. The foundation has seen increases in endowments and new donor advice funds. The CDC received accreditation from the NEYC, the National Association for the Education of the Young Child and enrollment is at an all-time high, and again, with a waiting list. Our Jewish summer camp enrollments are also at an all-time high. An upgrade and a fresh restart, a fresh a refresh of the fitness center and gym. Our Jewish family service has dedicated 718 staff hours to Yechad and provided 322 recipients with Sizaka holiday food gifts. The Institute for Holocaust Education brought the Carolyn Dorfman Dance Residency to our community, and the IEG Tour Beat Carps, My Broken Doll, at the Nebraska State Thespian Festival. The ADL CRC impacted thousands 
with their No Place for Hate school campaign and continues to combat anti-Semitism in our region. We have seen new focus on PJ Library programming and engaging for young families. A second women's mission to Israel will take place in the fall, and hopefully 35 teens will be heading to Israel this December. Young Jewish giving has taken off with 51 new and 53 re-engaged teen philanthropists. Our Jewish senior outreach made over 100 home visits, delivered thousands of kosher meals to our seniors. We awarded over $250,000 in scholarships. The Jewish press is now available online and in di digital format. And congratulations to Jewish press board member David Kotak, who this weekend was inducted to the Omaha Press Club Hall of Fame. Security protocols, training, and communications has been enhanced on our campus. Our cybersecurity continues to identify and block hackers and other virtual intruders. Marketing continues to provide top quality material, and the Budget and Financial Review Committee worked long hours with our finance department completing the 2017-2018 budget. My leadership team of professionals are dedicated to enhancing our community of directors. Each one is committed to this campus and the community. In my opinion, though, one of the year's most exciting outcomes involves the community study. Many of you were called for that study. We are just at the beginning of analyzing the data and strategizing the future needs of our wonderful community. And I'd like to invite you all to our public release on Thursday, August 24th. Together, we can continue building a strong and vibrant Jewish Omaha. Thank you. We are honored to give the campaign update. Our 2017 annual campaign saw the participation of 1,460 donors whose contributions to the campaign totaled $3,203,006. Our success could not have happened without all of you and over 100 plus volunteers. These are we also saw dozens of new faces participate in programs designed to increase our Federation's appeal. You should expect to see more events like FED, the Hanukkah Extravaganza, and our Spring Women's Program. Jewish Heritage Day in August and the start of Jewish Business Leaders Group are two exciting initiatives you'll be hearing more about. Your gifts are making a profound impact locally and globally. Because of you, we are able to invest in our youth through scholarships for Jewish education, Jewish camps, and trips to Israel. Your gifts to the annual campaign help fight anti-Semitism and prejudice, assist our seniors, and care for families and individuals in need. With your gifts, we show our continuing support for Israel, while at the same time offering community engagement through cultural, social, and recreational opportunities on this vibrant JCC campus. We thank you all, donors, volunteers, and leaders in our community, along with our professional campaign staff for helping Federation fulfill its mission to build and sustain a strong and vibrant Omaha Jewish community and to support Jews in Israel and all around the world. I end my first year as president. I'd like to share some of the great things that happened here. I'm on the campus every day, attending lots of meetings, meeting with staff, community members, visitors to our facility. There is always something going on here, and it's always good. This past year, we hosted a number of events enjoyed by hundreds of community members, from our backyard concerts to our fantastic event at Dave and Buskers, with 350 people of all ages attending. These are the times that warm my heart as I see Jewish community coming together and passing on our traditions to the next generation. I am thankful to all of you who support the mission of the Jewish Federation of Omaha. And I None of the success comes without dedicated supporters. Tommy Feldman, please come and give us a campus update as we both believe our best days are ahead of us. Uh, long story short, with Steinberg, South, and a few people, we've got plans fairly near completion in the phases. Phase one is going to include a new outdoor uh, uh, Hopefully, someday we'll have some money to add some basketball courts and some more fitness areas where the outdoor pool is right now. New parking with new access routes around the JCC. A big sign out in front telling people who we are. Uh, uh, a CDC uh, add-on, a big addition. 
Uh, I'm here to tell you we've got a chunk of money raised. We've got around 15 million raised. We're hoping for 25 to 30 million. Uh, anyone that is willing to make a legacy gift for the JCC, we would greatly appreciate it. I'm available all summer long to come visit with you and show you the opportunities that we can all do, we all have to make a huge difference in our JCC for the next 43 years. This was built. To read the names of the 2017 and 2018 Jewish Federation of Omaha Board of Directors, please stand when I call your name. If you can, Toba Cohen Dunning, hurt herself. Eric Dunning. Jason Epstein, Jim Freed, Bruce Goldberg, Richard Heyman, Dana Kaufman, John Myers, Scott Myerson, Mike Norton, Carl Reichus, Mike Siegel, Jay Nottle. I'd like to personally thank each board member for their commitment and dedication to this community. <laughs> I'm honored to present the Lois Jean Schrager Memorial Young Leadership Award. This award is given to a young woman in the Omaha Jewish community who has made a personal commitment to the Jewish community, both locally and globally, and is a role model of leadership in her volunteer work. Tonight, I'm so happy to present this award to our niece, Jamie Myerson. Thank you. Thank you very much for this great honor, but it is an, actually my honor to volunteer for this amazing community. Every organization I have been involved in has challenged me and given me the opportunity to learn so much. I have met many incredible role models and am beyond grateful to be married to one of them. I am extremely proud and honored to be able to volunteer with many friends and family who continue to be powerful and generous leaders of this community. Tonight, my hope is that my girls see a different side of me, not just the mom who's always nagging them to do more, or the mom who is slightly obsessed with shopping, but a mom who cares deeply about our community and its future and inspires them to become young leaders today and always. Thank you. I'm honored to be here tonight to present this award in memory of our son, Bruce. I know that if Bruce were still with us, he would be an involved part of this great Jewish community. The Bruce Feldman Memorial Young Leadership Award is given annually to honor a young man who has demonstrated personal commitment, dedicated involvement, and exemplary leadership within the Jewish and general community. I am thrilled to present this award to my nephew, I really consider him more of a son, Troy Myerson. This volunteering opportunity came to me at age seven or eight when I tagged along with my mom early on a cold Sunday morning to the Arthritis Foundation Jingle Bell Run and served participants hot cocoa and ran errands for the organizers. I'm not sure why, but I love that experience. Throughout my childhood, my mom continued to volunteer for various charity events, and she often brought me along, mostly for free child labor. <laughs> but I always enjoyed the people, the work, and the feeling of making a difference for others. Even though I was, young, I was a young kid, and I guess it just stuck. I hope to instill the importance of community service in our three daughters the same way that my parents instilled it in me. Tonight is particularly meaningful for me because I get to share it with my wife, partner and best friend. I wouldn't be up here before you tonight without her support, encouragement, and advice every step of the way. For us to both be honored tonight together is very special to me, and I couldn't be prouder of her and everything she does for our family and our community. Thank you to the Federation for honoring me and Jamie tonight, along with an impressive and talented group of fellow honorees. I know we both feel blessed to be able to raise our kids in such a loving and generous community. I'm thankful to, to have had and to continue to have the opportunity to work with so many dedicated, 
hardworking and inspiring individuals at Temple Israel, at the Federation, within this Jewish community center, and throughout the Jewish community itself. Thank you very much. I am proud to present the Phil and Terry Schrager Spirit of Federations Award this evening. This award, established in 2006, was conceived by Phil in order to recognize outstanding service by a man and a woman, 45 years of age or older, who have demonstrated personal commitment, dedication, and leadership to the Federation and or its agencies. The recipients receive $1,500 to be used to attend a national conference or community mission, and their names are engraved on a plaque, which is permanently displayed in the JCC lobby. Phil and Terry wanted to establish this award to recognize and encourage volunteerism and to support the advancement of the Jewish community. Tonight we honor two outstanding leaders with the Phil and Terry Schrager Spirit of Federation Award. Sharon has indeed been a perfect example of Spirit of Federation and it is my privilege tonight to recognize her continued support and devotion to our Jewish community with this award. Thank you so much. I would like to congratulate all of the other honorees here tonight. It is such an unexpected honor to receive the Phil and Terry Schrager Spirit Federation Award. As you know, I have lived in Omaha for 23 years, and the Federation has played a large role in my professional and volunteer career. Anne Frank wrote, how wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. I feel that the mission of the Federation and its agencies allow all of us the opportunity to improve the world and leave it in a better place than we found it. I would like to thank Phil and Terry for establishing this award. Phil and Terry demonstrated the spirit of Federation in all that they have done. Terry continues Phil's legacy of philanthropy and love for our community. I am very lucky to continue to have a few great mentors to help me along the way. I would not be standing here if it weren't for Jan Goldstein. She is a mentor, teacher, and friend. Jan rescued me from the world of banking. She somehow knew that my heart lied with the Jewish community and the work of the Federation. I am eternally grateful for her support and her continued friendship. And what can I say about Joe Maxine Kirschenbaum that everyone does not already know? They taught me to give all you can of your time to the organizations you are passionate about. They have both been great sounding boards when I needed guidance. I would not be the person I am without their support. Lastly, I'd like to thank my family, Jeff, Alyssa, and Lauren. I believe that the more you give, the more you get. This giving can sometimes take a toll on your family. I am so grateful for the encouragement through the many evening meetings and events that took my time away from them. I am so lucky that they all share my passion for Takun Alam and making the world a better place. Thank you again to Phil and Terry and the Jewish Federation of Omaha. Uh, John Myers. John, come on up here. John Myers is right back. I want to thank Phil and Terry especially for uh, creating this award, and Sharon, uh, you did a great job of thanking him. Said Sorry. Yeah, that's good. I also want to thank the people from Temple Israel who nominated me for this. It was uh, a surprise. I wasn't expecting it. Uh, I want to tell you a little anecdote. Uh, when it hit the Jewish press, I started getting texts and phone calls and emails and so on and so forth. But one text that uh, really stuck out, it was supposed to say, congratulations, John, this is great. You really deserved it. However, it auto-corrected and said, congratulations, John, you, on this award, you really desired it. <laughs> the, the reality is, is that none of us here tonight desire these awards, uh, but we do deserve them, but we don't feel we deserve them because we don't desire them. So I want to talk a little bit about desire recognition and deserved recognition. Uh, the thing that I've been most impressed with uh, ever since a young child when my parents did a lot of volunteering was the amount of volunteer and professional work that goes into running this entire community from a secular point, but specifically tonight from the 
from the Jewish community point. Uh, I've been involved with a lot of different things and a lot of different organizations. I didn't shave tonight. I haven't shaved in a month. This mustache is named Zeke. Zeke made $18,000 from the Ronald McDonald House, and our group raised $440,000 this year. Well, yeah, that's one of those things like you don't desire it, but you, you know, you, you just do. Volunteering is very important in our community. Most everybody here in this room understands that. All of you are very involved. I think it's terrific. I think our Jewish community is really lucky to have so many involved people, so many involved professionals. And actually, Julie Caspian, you said it the best. I love, how, I love what you said tonight, and I really appreciate what you've done. Again, thank you very much. I don't desire it. Whether I deserve it, it's another thing. Thank you. Howie is somebody who people, I think, know in very different ways. Most of the people who know him know him for his research, his brilliant research. To give you one snippet of what this man has done, you, know, you would say, Dayunu, it's enough that he innovated a method for fighting Parkinson's to the extent that he has. But you know, when you create a drug, you can't just go ahead then and give it to a human and try it out. The FDA is not going to be very happy about that. And if you give it to an animal, the animal may not respond the same way a human would. How he developed a method by which you could actually, believe it or not, add human brain tissue to a mouse's brain so that he could test the drug and have a better understanding of how the drug would respond in a human system. How many people benefited from that? So, in one way, we know Howie as a brilliant innovator. Another way people know him is for his courage. Howie will probably speak more about that, but uh, there are so many times in his life when he confronted opposition in terms of resistance to the research that he did, politics, all kinds of things where he could have taken the easier path. He could have said, I'll drop the research, I'll leave UNMC, I'll leave Omaha, I'll do something else. I don't need this, I don't deserve it, I won't deal with it. But he didn't. When Howie decides that something is correct, he goes to lengths that I don't know anybody else would match. He sticks to his guns and he pursues the path he truly, truly fervently believes in. He has courage to match anybody I've ever met, and maybe then some. Maybe as much as anything else, and maybe this would be the biggest surprise for people who have seen him as an innovator and as a fighter. Love also motivates a great deal of what he does. I am first extraordinarily humbled by this award. It's uh, very different than anything that I'm used to, whether it be mentoring, research, education, uh, or even fighting with our administration at the Med Center as we develop and grow. Uh, occasionally with my wife, she was here my partner, and really I owe a lot of this uh, success to her. She's sitting here in the front row, so she's certainly the hero of, of the two of us. Uh, she's the one who raised our children and, and certainly uh, have done a tremendous amount for the community in so many different ways, and uh, it would be uh, at least another half an hour to an hour uh, just to talk about her. Joel, you're a great friend. Uh, I'm really privileged, lucky, and uh, more than speechless to, to listen to your words. Uh, to our community, our friends, our fellow scientists who are sitting in the audience, who's really been my watchdog, who's been with me, many of them, for almost 25 years since I've been in Omaha, to the administration, uh, and to the generations of this community that will follow us and we're building and celebrating today. But first, I, I really have uh, a very difficult task uh, to tell you a few stories, now I'm allowed, for Lori has given me that uh, privilege, tell a few stories. Some are heart-wrenching and some are funny. Uh, but first, I'd like to really acknowledge the three women that have really played an instrumental role. One, of course, I mentioned is my wife. The other are two that you wouldn't expect. One is Elizabeth Taylor, and the other is Sharon Stone. So you're going to ask, uh, how would this little guy from Omaha, Nebraska, uh, 
after looking at the rich iron stone of Elizabeth Taylor. It turns out that my first grant, my first research grant, was given as part of the Rock Hudson Endowment that Elizabeth Taylor uh, established. And I got to meet Elizabeth Taylor at a dinner uh, with Sharon Stone. And we were talking and had some wine. And, and they agreed after that to actually dedicate my first book. So if everyone buys my first book, this is a 2000 volume on neurological complications of infections. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that uh, you're ready to go. but. Uh, please buy it. Uh, it's really a hot uh, thing. It looked right at your coffee table. Um, but uh, the big question I wanted to start with is why does Bonnie Block, Elizabeth Taylor have in common? What could they possibly have in common? I'd like to share that to really start this uh, little talk. So just so you don't know uh, the three people, uh, the one in the middle is actually the most beautiful of all. Uh, that's uh, Bonnie. Uh, and it was tough to get a date when you have a, a looker like that, uh, even though I was her boss when we first got, I was worried that she would never go out with me. <laughs> uh, and uh, well, to show of hands, who thinks the one in the middle is the most beautiful? Let's go. Okay. So the person who gets it right, I will donate $5,000 to the Federation uh, while you can say, now please, if you give the right answer, I will give $5,000 to, uh, Bonnie is going to write the check right now, $5,000 to the graduation. Okay, you got three seconds, any hands? Yeah, what is it? Oh, you know what it is. Okay, so this is the answer. This is the answer. Now, as you know, uh, all three married little Jewish guys with beards, as you know. Uh, but there's only one out of those three that has been married for nearly 40 years. So I, I think that's pretty good, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, like little Jewish guys with beards. Very important. Maybe not anymore. After this, I'll be divorced. <laughs> What's going on here? Okay. So I, I think what if, if I had to put together my journey in Omaha, I, I got it from Helen Keller, which is really avoiding danger is not safer in the long run than outright exposure. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. So what does that mean? What did I do? When I came to Omaha, my friend said that Omaha's flat. And when you come to Omaha, uh, you'll fall off the side and you'll drift to oblivion. <laughs> and my previous mentor was the chair of Johns Hopkins Department of Neurology. He said, you're a great guy, but we're probably not going to be seeing you anymore. And I remember having seen him two years ago when the University of Nebraska and our Department of Pharmacology beat, beat Johns Hopkins in ratings. Uh, we were number six, and Hopkins was number eight. So um, he did. He said, "I knew that all the time." You know. <laughs> okay. So we we started off as we built a program. Uh, right in the middle of uh, a courtroom, and we had to deal with this issue of clash of values. And I, I learned more about the Omaha Jewish community sitting in a courtroom in Lincoln, Nebraska, than anything else. That's why I went. I, I came as an observant Orthodox Jew, and who would be sitting next to me to try to console me, make me feel like it's going to be okay, they're going to put me in jail, is what we're doing with embryonic stem cells at this time. And it was Rabbi Azrael from Temple Israel. And he said, you know something, Howie? I said, what? He said, you know, something I hadn't known. You said, you know how the polio vaccine came around. I said, I really didn't know. Rabbi, tell me. He said, well, the polio vaccine was started by uh, Dr. Salk, Sabin, and was developed by embryonic stem cells and fetal cells. And would save millions of lives. And then he sat with me in that courtroom and afterwards on the radio and TV during that time and uh, consoled me. And this is the coming together of the Omaha community. It didn't matter what faith, position, uh, the sense of camaraderie, a sense of community, a sense of direction. This is something really unbelievable. And only in Omaha, only our federation can really attest to the one community. Research. I love this when they pick it in my house, and as my wife remembers, 
Uh, the kids were crying, they were standing outside in the moral research, they're drumming, and I went to the guy. And unfortunately, I, I never was, my picture was never in the paper. And he said, you know, this is a problem. You shouldn't be picketing the house. He said, well, you don't understand. You don't know that guy, Dr. Gandelman. He's a really bad guy. And I said, well, I've met him a couple times. <laughs> I can tell you, he's a really good guy. I said, the guy, he said, you don't know, we're having an argument about how good Dr. Gendelman was. I said, he was great and wonderful. And uh, I remember one of the picketing, we put our, uh, our Passover tables outside and put all the kids' toys while everybody was watching the picketing. We had a great yard sale, which was illegal in our community. But we raised all the money, and unfortunately, none of them went to the Federation. Uh, but it, it did go to the synagogue, so I think that's good, right? But the moral research that came, uh, but great things happened too with the help of the community. Uh, we spent a semester at the Weizmann Institute. Uh, there were many awards and positions and accolades that came from our research. Uh, and we're very proud that the community stood behind us and stood with us, uh, which is, un again, uh, without parallel that we saw ultimately discovered of the vaccine that targets Parkinson's disease. And when we were hurting with the community, and I never remember, we were at Alan Bear's house. Everybody remember Alan Bear? Yes. Everybody remembers Alan Bear. He's a great guy. A little crazy, but so am I. Uh, and I said, Alan, he was working out at the J. I said, Alan, I have a problem. I have a problem. He said, what's your problem? He said, well, they're picketing my house. They're taking the money away. The governor, a guy named Joe Hans, you probably don't remember who he was. Uh, but he, they stopped the funding and support. And he said, don't worry, we're going to have a party at my house. We'll raise the money so you can continue the work in Parkinson's. And the Jewish community came together. We raised $500,000 in that evening. And the Blumkins, Eric Singer, uh, others within this community came together and allowed us to continue this research. And it was the Jewish Federation, it was the Jewish community that made a uh, significant difference and allowed us to move to phase one studies which were quite successful announced several months ago and now a movement to expand uh, our work in Parkinson's and HIV but ultimately but ultimately uh, if we can hold this for a second <laughs> and I'd like to just end with a story that I think really uh, highlights uh, really what we're all about and that's not just what I'm about which, you know, as a doctor for so many years, and here for over 20, 20 some years, even before, as a scientist, a teacher, and an educator. But we try to, as uh, Sharon said very eloquently, thank you, Sharon, is that we're trying to make a difference. That when we live our life, whatever we do in our community, we want to make it a little better. And when we save a life, and we influence a life, we save the world. So I want to just share with you one story that, that really came from this research that they were protesting and saying what we're doing and it's terrible. The Ferris Welcome was the preamble to Flaxo, uh, Smith Klein. We're developing a drug that penetrated the brain and reversing the dementia associated with HIV. And I was called to Creighton University for a moment and a uh, very high level in the Catholic Church said, please see this patient. It was nearly 20 some years ago today, two decades today, and uh, we came in. We diagnosed this, this young woman, then in her 20s, and clearly she had a dementing illness. She was given maybe a month to live, and through our research, we were able to change the outcome, to save the world. I haven't seen this woman <laughs> since this time, and we saved, but I'd like to play her story, because it really depicts not only who I am, or what I think I am, or want to be, but it depicts all of us, whether who we are, what we do, in terms of giving back and to making a difference in the world. Uh, can we start it? About my life is a little over a year ago, I was diagnosed with having the AIDS virus. And Dr. Guy Gendelman is the one who diagnosed me. And when he diagnosed me, I was in the advanced stages. In fact, at one point, my viral load was off the charts at over a million. And he said that if my medicine didn't start kicking in soon, I would probably be dead within two months. Unlike most AIDS patients, dementia was only the only real symptom that I had. And the dementia did some really crazy things to me, 
For example, I would walk into rooms and or walk in around my house and look for rooms that weren't there. I would wash dishes in the sink only to find out there were no dishes or water in the sink. I would take my students to lunch two hours early and then when it was actually time for lunch time, I would be late. And I only remember, remember these things because of what my family and friends have told me. Um, for about four to six months of my life, I can remember very little. There was one thing that I would like to point about, out about this whole experience. It took me five doctors before I was finally diagnosed. The first four doctors either diagnosed me with, a, with something that I did not have, or they did not, did not di diagnose me. In fact, one doctor said that my ordinary life was causing too much stress and wanted to come back in a month and we'll see what else we could do. They never asked me if I thought that I might have AIDS or would you like to be tested. And had I given off, been given the opportunity, I would have said, well, no, I don't think I have AIDS, but go ahead and test me. That extraordinary time in my life happened about 14 months ago. And lots of has happened since then, both on the medical end and in my personal ordinary life. Dr. Gittleman continues to monitor my progress and my condition, and I continue to maintain my ordinary life. I do not have a medical mind, and there's a lot of lot going on there that I will never understand. I do know one thing that if it wasn't for all of you who understand it, that I wouldn't be here today. And for that, I will be forever grateful that I'm able to live my extraordinary, ordinary life. Thank you, Dr. Gillen. The reason I stayed on stage was not because I was looking for the limelight, but because we have a special, special surprise for all of you. And that is the woman whose life Dr. Gendelman saved 22 years ago is sitting in the back of the theater. And I'd like to ask her to come forward and come up on stage. research and development, uh, my clinical care had uh, went back and I, I didn't really know what had happened up until this night. It's our first time together in 20 years. Uh, but it really brings home the issue of what we are and what we do that an impact of 20 years ago, a diagnosis or an, an idea or a treatment or some love and caring can in fact change the world. So thank you for allowing me to change the world. <laughs> 